We handed out hardware in the ACC. Now it's the SEC's turn. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. South Carolina comes in as the defending SEC tournament champions, but they have to go through a Georgia team who is dangerous right now. Georgia took down the top seed in this tournament. Can Joni Taylor and her Lady Bulldogs take down to the, to the defending champ? We're about to find out here at Greenville. Dominance, will it continue for the South Carolina Gamecocks in this tournament? Taking on Georgia inside the well in Greenville. Winner is the SEC Tournament Champion. Welcome to Greenville. Courtney Lyle alongside National Championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. Steffi Sorensen will also be joining us. South Carolina has won five of the last six SEC Tournament titles. But this Georgia team is hot right now. Well, in Joni Taylor's approach, because of COVID, she didn't set a long-term goal to say that we want to be at this spot. She just climbed one rung at a time of this ladder, one game at a time focused, and finds herself playing for a SEC championship. And it's an experienced Georgia team. They rely on a handful of seniors, four of them to be exact, who have pushed, pushed this Georgia team to this point. They're seeking their first SEC tournament title since 2001. And each one of the four has played a part. You've got Gabby Connolly that pushes things in transition. Maya Caldwell has been fantastic in this tournament. Jenna Stady has been a dominant post, especially on the defensive end, the backstop of the Georgia defense. And talking about defense, defense does travel for the Georgia Lady Dogs, led by co-SEC Defensive Player of the Year, Q Morrison. And Joni Taylor has her dogs playing right, right, well, well, right now in this tournament. You see their numbers over two games here in the SEC tournament. Georgia will need them today to take down the defending champion. We talk about how Georgia is a veteran team. But South Carolina does start three sophomores. But remember, they won this tournament last year. There's nothing like experience. Once you get a taste of it, you want more. And that's how those sophomores are playing right now. They've started out gangbusters. Yeah, South Carolina is playing some of its best basketball right now. They are sharing the basketball and being deliberate. Deliberate about playing through Aaliyah Boston, but more importantly, looking for the extra pass. They have shared the basketball so nice. It has been sweet. Their offense has been smooth. But you know what else South Carolina has brought? A little nasty, too, a toughness. They have really flexed their muscles inside, especially on the defensive end. Will they continue what they started first two games? They look like one of the best teams in this tournament. Will that continue? Boston, Henderson, and Cook have made this South Carolina team go. But man, what a different, how different is it in the last year? Steffi Sorensen, so much has changed since South Carolina won that tournament title last year. Yeah, Courtney, the significance of this moment is not lost on either of these teams. A year ago on this day was the last time players took the floor without thinking about a global pandemic. And the fact that we are here, we have fans in the stands, is a testament to the dedication and commitment by all parties involved. Guys, the hundreds of tests taken, the safety protocols put into place, the quarantines, more importantly, the leadership of navigating on a whim has shown the resilience of this basketball community. It has been a remarkable feat to get here and set up a special moment for the two coaches taking the floor today. It is a very special moment because, Steffi, for the first time in SEC history, two black women are playing for an SEC championship. History being made today. Multiple ways history will be made today. So cool to be here to witness this. It's Georgia, it's South Carolina, it's the SEC Tournament Championship game. Get ready. These two teams met, of course, during the regular season. It was South Carolina coming up big. Aaliyah Boston had a triple-double in the first meeting, but Georgia is improved since then. A balanced attack, and the most important key for Georgia is Jenna Stady staying out of foul trouble and in this game.
One of these teams will be crowned the SEC Tournament Champ. Both of these teams very good defensively. It will, it will be interesting to see who is able to flex their might, show their will, and dictate defensively. Yeah, two great teams, two great coaches going against each other. The chess match is on today. This is Maya Caldwell, number 11 in the black jersey. She has been red hot for Georgia. Jordan Isaacs to the rack, misses, and it's rebounded by Aaliyah Boston. Destiny Henderson earning her way to the charity stripe. Henderson is the leader now. She's the point guard that makes off this offense run. She has the keys to the bus, and she really gets things going for South Carolina, pu pushing in transition, and her decision-making has continued to improve, and it's where Don Staley wants it to be right now. Don Staley's team has come out and been so dominant in the first quarter here in Greenville. They are averaging 27 points in the first quarter. We'll see if they can continue to get off to a hot start. Well, they're playing hungry because they lost the SEC regular season to Texas A&M. So they are wanting to at least have a trophy from the end of this SEC season before the NCAAs. There's Jenna Staley with the basketball. She's going to be important for Georgia. And she has had a phenomenal tournament. Q Morrison hits. Zaya Cook, the one-handed lay-in. She has been much more under control as of late. These sophomores, especially Zaya Cook, has really played on balance. There's Gabby Connolly. Hey, watch out. She has had a slow start the first two games, but if Connolly heats up, hey, that's a good sign for Georgia. Now she shoots 40% from behind the arc. Only had six points yesterday, but one of those seniors that we've talked about. Well. After Zaya Cook comes off this ball screen and attacks to score, a good answer and an option to have is senior Gabby Connolly knocking down the three. Hey, that's a good sign for the Bulldogs. Victoria Saxton with the easy up and in. Stady gets good position and gets a layup. And that's key. When you're playing against Aaliyah Boston, you can't catch it and then try to figure it out. You've got to do your work early. Gain the advantage so that the pass leads to a score. Jenna Stady did have some success against South Carolina in their only regular season meeting. She had 15 points and nine rebounds. Missed layup for South Carolina. Q Morrison jump ball, possession arrow pointing to the Gamecocks. How fun has it been to watch Q Morrison though play this year? So happy that she is healthy because throughout her career at Georgia, it has been stops and starts. She's completed this full senior year not having to miss because of injury. Now her offense is fun, but I might like watching her more on defense. <laughs> the SEC co-defensive player of the year along with South Carolina's Aaliyah Boston. They do it in two different ways. Boston with the blocking of the shots, the dominance in the paint, but you're going to see Q Morrison with steals, drawing charges, just wreaking havoc on the defensive side. There's a steal for Georgia. That was Jordan Isaacs, and now she has the basketball back. Connolly feeling it. That one off to the left. South Carolina loves to push in transition. And with Henderson leading the way, it's hard to stop. She just has another burst of speed, but you've got to find her early and you've got to get her out of the middle of the floor because if she has that path, she's going to make you look silly. Stady having to work against some length. Oh, tough pass to Isaacs. Just watch the speed of Destiny Henderson and how she really surveys the situation. Gabby Conley keep backing up. Destiny Henderson's going to keep coming. Henderson averaging over 15 points here in the SEC tournament. Over five assists inside to Boston. She's got Stady on her hip. Splits the double team, won't drop in the shot, but will go to the free throw line. But the, what, what the rest of South Carolina's players need to watch and see 
When Aaliyah Boston gets the basketball, don't shrink in close to Boston, but space out so that she can recognize if your defender is coming for the double team, hey, Aaliyah Boston's a willing passer. She'll find you. That was the first foul on Jenna Stady. Something to keep an eye on. They need her in the ball game. Yeah, she's going to have to play smart. We talked about she's one of the four seniors. She's done a pretty good job in this tournament, first two games, of not getting into foul trouble. And after the Kentucky game in the regular season, Johnny, Jody Taylor sat her down and was like, look, I can't afford to have you over here sitting with me. <laughs> you have got to stay in that ball game and keep yourself out of foul trouble. She's had 10 double-doubles on the season, three straight. Stady's got some range, too. She hit a three yesterday in the semifinals. Look, I love it. The women's game, it's not the traditional, just post players that play on the block. They got face-up games as well, both Stady and Aaliyah Boston. Yeah, Aaliyah Boston had uh, two threes. We got to add that in, too. Hey, just because you're over 6'3", there's, there's not a no-shoot zone. You can still step at the top of the key. I did it. <laughs> Coach didn't always like it, but I did it. <laughs> Maya Caldwell over the double team. She has been a different player this weekend. Oh, over the last three games, she's been on one. Her offense has started to come together. She has spent time watching film, learning how she could be more effective offensively, and it's paying off. Oh, Offensive yeah. foul on Boston. Getting chippy. Yeah, Boston gave a shove to Jenna Stady. These two battling inside. Aaliyah Boston has said she likes the physicality, but as physical as Jenna Stady is being on her right now, that looked like Boston didn't like that too much. She's like, Get off of me, and the officials caught it. That's a good call. She lowered that shoulder into Jenna Stady, knocked her down. They're going to the monitor. Do you see anything extra? I mean, I don't think it was malicious, Yeah. but it wasn't a normal basketball right. play either. Right, it's definitely either. a foul. Sure. They're not going to elevate this but it will be a foul on Boston, so Dawn Staley is going to put her on the bench for a minute. Lily Grissett comes in. One foul on Aaliyah Boston. There is one foul on Jenna Stady of Georgia. Now Victoria Saxon gives up a little size, but she does not give up the length you get from Aaliyah Boston. Stady quickly fired a pass over to Jordan Isaacs. It'll put her at the free throw line. Georgia's already second in the SEC in free throw percentage, but they're shooting even better from the charity stripe in the SEC tournament at 78, almost 79%. The offense, that has been an area for Georgia this season that has not always run smoothly. But in this SEC tournament, if they're not scoring baskets, they are getting themselves to the free throw line. Lily Grissett, Victoria Saxton. Offensive rebound for Carolina. They're so good at that sixth in the nation. Zaya Cook, well short. And it's a travel on Isaacs. South Carolina, their point guard, Destiny Henderson. We go hitting in the Jets when we come back. Destiny Henderson has played so well in this SEC tournament last season. This season, the same thing. She pushes in transition, and when she can find a seam, she's going all the way to the rack. But she has terrific court vision as well. And she recognizes not only where the defense is, but where her teammates are as well. And then she's also good at finding space. She is a terrific scorer from the three-point line. So this is a total package from the point guard of Destiny Henderson.
And Don Staley says that for the second time coming into this tournament, she's playing with a chip on her shoulder, being snubbed off a of first or second all-conference on the SEC team, playing extra motivated and without any notoriety, and in fact, the most improved player for the South Carolina Gamecocks team. Yeah, and Steffi, when we talked to Dawn about Destiny today, she said sometimes if you come in with a chip on your shoulder, you can hurt the team because you're trying to do too much. Destiny doesn't let that happen. No, she's cool about it. She's like, okay, this is what I need to do. I'll, I'll prove and show everybody. Look, she was left off the Nancy Lieberman list of one of the best point guards in the country. And I think, you know, for so long, South Carolina sitting at the top of the polls. How do you leave off Destiny Henderson? Lily Grissett traveled. South Carolina has scored six straight points. That's the third turnover for South Carolina. Georgia was six straight. You know, Courtney, on the break, you were asking me, how long can South Carolina keep Aaliyah Boston on the bench? Well, here's going to be the issue. If Victoria Saxton leaves the paint in the offensive side, Jenna State is going to stay on the inside and stop any penetration lanes. Grissett gets another opportunity, fed beautifully by Destiny Henderson. She has terrific court vision, Destiny Henderson does. She'll find you if you run the floor with her. Boston on the bench, to your point, Carolyn, with one foul. Jenna Stady still out there for Georgia with one foul. You see where Saxon is? Jenna Stady down at the SEC. That's an unforced turnover. Now with Letitia Ami here in the game for South Carolina, Ami here has a face-up game. So now Jenna Stady's going to have to come out of the paint. Georgia's hit its last three shots. This is Q Morrison. Isaacs with an opening. South Carolina has gotten off to very fast starts. We told you they're averaging about 27 points per game in the first quarter at the SEC tournament, outscoring teams by 19. The defense, a lot of times, scoring off def scoring off turnovers too, running in transition. But it hasn't been that hit the gas that we've seen from S South Carolina in the last two games in this first quarter. No, it has not been at all. But that has a lot to do with the defense that Georgia is playing and Aaliyah Boston on the bench in foul trouble. You remember the game yesterday. South Carolina's offense moved because the ball was going through Aaliyah, Aaliyah Boston. She didn't have to score it every time, though she did. But when the ball comes into Boston, the defense has to shrink, and then that opens up passes to shooters on the perimeter. And right there we see Aaliyah Boston coming back into this game. Boston does have one foul. She's averaging over 15 points and 12 rebounds in the tournament. She averages a double-double on the season. And she's just a sophomore. She is so smart. She does a good job of using her body, using her size, and she has the versatility of her game. Nice face-up game. She can put it on the deck. Ami here gets a piece of it. Q Morrison with a smart save. The length that South Carolina has. Leticia Ami here, she has a reach of a six foot 10. She's got a vertical 27.6. Q Morrison didn't have a shot right there. South Carolina can tie it. Connolly looking up ahead, but overthrows Maya Caldwell. Now both of these teams like to run in transition, and Joni Taylor has really worked on having an organized transition game, but that's not it when <laughs> you're throwing the ball. But as long as you throw the ball out of bounds, if you're turning it over, at least you get your defense set. Boston up through contact, no whistle out of bounds off of Georgia. Now watch, underneath out of bounds, 
Look for Zaya Cook to be an option. That's going to be the second on Jenna Stady. That's big. The physicality of the post inside. So Jenna Stady is going to have to take a seat with those two fouls. They bring in Javin Nicholson. This isn't the first time that Georgia's had to deal with Stady in foul trouble, but it doesn't help when Aaliyah Boston is the opponent down low. No, that's a, that's a handful for Javin Nicholson to have to battle with. But now Aaliyah Boston has got to stay in this game. She's got to be smart, not pick up her second foul. Boston on the putback. So valuable down low. Well, she's got great hands. And she also doesn't mind the physical play. She's going to stay after it on the glass. Caldwell for three. She's up to five points. Caldwell averaging almost 20 points a game in this SEC tournament. Possession, Georgia. You see number four in black for Georgia back out on the floor. That is Michaela Coombs. It's good to see her. She went down yesterday with an ankle injury briefly, came back for Georgia, made a huge difference. Had a career-high 14 points. Well, the way that Joni Taylor has coached all season is relying on her bench so that everybody can play fresh, give good minutes. And that's what Nicholson and Coombs do for Georgia. You see the connection there, gets Georgia a couple of points. 30 seconds to go in the quarter. This is Destiny Littleton. Did you see it? Boston's, I can see the light go on, I can take her. But when Boston gets the ball at the high post, all of South Carolina's players, they need to spread out. They need to space out to, to give her room to work. Coombs with the kick to the corner. Q. Money. That's a senior, and Georgia has the lead after 10 minutes. Big moments from the seniors understanding what it means in an SEC tournament final. When you get the ball at the end of the shot clock, you got to knock it down. Stay hot as you head into the second quarter. Georgia doesn't care that South Carolina has won five of the last six SEC tournament titles. They have come out ready to go against the defending champ. They lead it as we get set for the start of the second quarter. Georgia seniors, three of the four have already scored five points for Georgia. They've been a big part of the Lady Bulldogs offense. Well, and jo Gina, St Gina, Stady, Gina Stady is the fourth of those four seniors. She has four points, but she's on the bench now in foul trouble. Now, Stady with two fouls, something to keep an eye on. Yeah, talking to Jenna Stady about these four seniors, easily could have transferred out, been a dra uh, grad transfer anywhere else. Zaya Cook with the shot, but I asked Jenna, why did you guys stay? All four of you could have gone and played somewhere else. And she, and she said, I believe in Joni. We were brought here for a reason. We want to finish this. It is a family. It just felt like they couldn't leave Joni Taylor. And watching them play against Texas A&M, Maya Caldwell hit a three. Q Morrison hit a three. They're going down the sideline. They're slapping high fives with their, high, with their head coach. They love playing for Joni Taylor. Yeah, it's very evident. Q Morrison especially. Every time we get the chance to talk to her and you ask her about Joni, her face just lights up. Well, Joni has been with Q Morrison through the recruiting process. Q said, Joni Taylor was with me through going through any kind of adversity and also going through all of my injuries through her previous three years. So when she says Joni Taylor asked her to do anything, she's all about it. Yeah, coach, I got you. 
Well, right now, they're trying to get Joni Taylor an SEC Tournament Championship on her birthday. Oh, Maya Caldwell ripped that out of the hands of Bree Beal. The defense of Georgia, Maya Caldwell and Q Morrison. Look at that, just a nice job. Keeping your eyes on the basketball. Two hands on the basketball, and Georgia gets the possession. Up top to Morrison. Now Mallory Bates in for Georgia inside. Nate Coombs is looking for the roll, but Mallory Bates wasn't there. And look, Destiny Henderson, she's still on the push. Free Beal shot blocked. Aaliyah Boston will head to the line. That foul is on Mallory Bates. Well, Champ Week rolls on later with one more women's title game on ESPN2. The Pac-12 championship game is at 8 Eastern. The one-seed Stanford taking on the three-seed in UCLA. Of course, you can always watch it live anywhere on the app. How good is that game going to be coming up later tonight? Well, UCLA won in the regular season. It's going to be back and forth, those two. <laughs> It's always Corey Close, Tara Vanderveer, great strategist of the game, too. It's going to be like a chess match. Okay, can we go back to the move that Aaliyah Boston made to get to the free throw line? She had it at the top of the key. Your big girl, 6'5", coming down the lane, even hit it with a crossover, going to the basket. Super sophomore. Absolutely. Pat, is that something that Aaliyah Boston came into South Carolina with, that ability, or have you seen her evolve into it this sophomore year? Well, the ball handling, she has evolved over the this COVID time, and she spends time working with Coach Jolette Law. When Jolette Law works with the guards, Aaliyah Boston came down and said, I want some of that. And so she wanted to add it to her bag of tricks. You know, her bag of tricks used to be just a backpack. Now she said it's the size of a duffel bag. I love it. Yeah, it's definitely increased. She, and she packed that bag for Greenville. Absolutely. She has shown it all in the paint, her mid-range game, shooting the three and taking it off the dribble. Connolly comes in the game for Georgia. Georgia led at the end of the first quarter, 23-17. to 17. Out to Henderson. Destiny Henderson for three. That's where I was telling you, Destiny Henderson at point guard, but she's not distribute only. She's a threat on the court, scoring as well. She shoots in the mid 40s from the three point line. Nicholson's shot is off the mark. Henderson saves it right into the lap of Dawn Staley, but back out on the floor just like that. Toughness. Cook overthrows Saxton. Georgia takes it. Destiny Henderson being very deliberate. That is the word. And if you don't find her, you don't match up with her. She is going to find Hunt buckets and knock them down. Henderson up to six points. South Carolina trailing by one. That's Sarah Ashley Barker over there on the wing. Bree Beal, the hustle play, and Ami here is off. And South Carolina's struggles continue on the easy layups. But Dawn Staley watching on the sideline, the hustle, the dive on the floor, Dawn Staley jumped up like she was gonna get in the scrum. She is excited and really impressed with the tenacity this team is playing with. Ami here with a special move in the lane. Spin and in, Leticia Ami here. South Carolina back on top.
Sarah Ashley Barker is short. Hey, that's seven straight points for South Carolina. Leticia Ami here. The game has got to slow down for her, and she's got to finish, and that's exactly what she's doing for the Gamecocks right now. Don Staley has told us Leticia Ami here has the most upside on this team. She is going to help them down the stretch, especially next up in the NCAA tournament. Well, you know, she came in a year and a half ago, midway through her high school season after she had torn her ACL. Woo! Gabby Connolly knocking it down, but Ami here played with a knee brace last year. No knee brace this year. She is playing much freer, more athletically for the Gamecocks. Foul on Gabby Connolly of Georgia. Well, next Monday, March 15th, we will have the exclusive live announcement of the 64-team NCAA Women's Championship field again this year. We'll break down every team and every matchup in each region. It's at 7 Eastern on ESPN and, of course, the app with a bonus hour of coverage at 8 Eastern on ESPNU. South Carolina projected to be a number one seed. They've got to finish business here in Greenville, though. There will be two teams from the SEC on that one line. But I still, it's hard for me to predict who would be the favorite to win a national championship. I think, I think the field is wide open. For Georgia, if they get a win today, because NC State beat Louisville, they would move to a two seed with a win today. Look at the scrapping, going after it. A finals on the line. Boston running the floor. But another missed layup. Just not able to convert. For the SEC tournament, South Carolina is shooting just 49% on layups. Georgia back on top by one. Thank you. This is a close game that we've got here in Greenville. Layups, every bucket is going to be key. Layups have been a trouble spot for South Carolina. Today, they're 7 of 13. They need those easy shots in a tight contest. But at least today, they're over 50%. They were 50% or less in the first two rounds of this tournament. They've got to finish the easy ones in the paint. Like Rebecca Lobo said, they're getting the offensive rebounds, but they got to finish inside. That was Jordan Isaacs for Georgia on the bucket. South Carolina used to getting off to a hot start in this tournament, but only scored 17 points in that first frame. Two days in a row at Leah Boston just crushing it from three-point land. She's a perimeter player right now. Whatever she wants to do, I'm okay with it. She's got that in her game. Already 11 points for Boston. There's the takeaway. No Jenna Stady in the game for Georgia. She has two fouls, has only played eight minutes. Michaela Coombs leading the break. And Coombs finishes the transfer from UConn. The best thing for Georgia to do is to score before South Carolina gets their defense set. But South Carolina, what I don't understand is running something different. Why not run two things back to back that have worked? You got to stay with what's working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Ami here, down low to Boston, going to the free throw line. Aaliyah Boston starts out on the perimeter, spaced out. If you hadn't gotten the memo, Aaliyah Boston's got a three. And then Ami here, hard attack down the middle and the dump to Aaliyah Boston. If I'm South Carolina, next play down, I run the same thing again. We talked a lot about Destiny Henderson coming in with that chip on her shoulder, but so did Aaliyah Boston. Remember last year, National Freshman of the Year did not get selected as SEC Player of the Year this season. And she's coming in hungry and motivated and showcasing how versatile her, her skill set is. And 
Peck, you talked about a duffel bag. She's looking like she's got a big carry-on, maybe upgraded to us. She's got a check a bag at this point. I was thinking she might have a ticket, have a have to have a slip because she checked <laughs> this bag. <laughs> she might even have a heavy sign on her suitcase. Boston with 14 points, four rebounds. Coombs running out of time, five seconds on the shot clock. Boston got a piece of it. Aaliyah Boston bringing a little bit of the nasty of the Gamecock. Squatted it. Get that out of here. Don't even try it against me. Georgia can't forget Aaliyah Boston had a triple double on them in the last meeting. That's her second triple-double of her career. Remember, her freshman year, first debut, Aaliyah Boston had a triple-double. Yeah, last time against Georgia, 16 points, 11 rebounds, 10 blocks. She was the first player to have a triple-double in their debut as a freshman. Make it history. Mark it. Boston on the national ballot for the Wooden Award. And pretty much every shortlist for Player of the Year. And she should be recognized and be in that conversation. The issue is that at times, South Carolina, I feel, doesn't use her enough. Open lane for Q Morrison. You gotta find that sweet spot of when the ball needs to go through Aaliyah Boston and when it's time for the guards. Q Morrison against Zaya Cook really splits the defense. This second quarter has been so close, just back and forth. Now clear out, space out. Henderson just quickly had to get a shot up. It's gonna be a shot clock violation. Georgia's defense is tough. It really is, and the collapsing, they really shorten the floor. And that's where I keep saying, South Carolina, when Aaliyah Boston touches it, wherever she is, everybody space out. Connolly loses it. That's the eighth turnover for Georgia. South Carolina trying to win its sixth SEC tournament championship. There's a mismatch, there's a switch. See, that's where Destiny Henderson has to recognize. Gabby Connolly was guarding Aaliyah Boston. That's gonna be an easy two, just dump it inside. South Carolina ball. the second foul on Boston. I want to see that again. Where was Caldwell? Was she outside the restricted area? She is. That's a good call. That's a good call by the officials. That's a charge. Again, Maya Caldwell stepping up in every way. Already has seven points, but then puts Aaliyah Boston on the bench with her second foul. So now both centers for both teams, not on the floor. Morrison off the screen, misses it all. Now's the time where I think Q Morrison for Georgia and Zaya Cook for South Carolina, they need to step up, start being a little more productive, a little more aggressive offensively. Don't have a ton of time though, 45 seconds left in the half. Henderson can drive in, another missed layup. Letitia, me here short. And they're going to call the foul on Letitia, me here. Her first. 
Well, I think that this is a time, though, with South Carolina. Destiny Henderson is feeling like she needs to take it upon herself in order to score the basket. And Joni Taylor, she changed her mind. She was thinking about putting Jenna Stady in the game with 33 seconds on the clock. No need to risk it. Javin Nicholson at the line for Georgia. Georgia led after the first 10 minutes, trying to take a lead into the locker room. Sarah Ashley Barker, that's a big rebound. Connolly feeding Nicholson. And Javin Nicholson will go back to the free throw line. And Georgia's making a concentrated effort of attacking, going inside. They're not settling just for outside shots. And when they do, they're either getting buckets or they're getting to the free throw line. Yeah, why not take it inside when Aaliyah Boston is not down low right now? Nineteen point two seconds for the Gamecocks. I expected. Zaya Cook to have the ball in her hands. She is a big moment player. Won't be easy with Hugh Morrison on her. The three. No problem! Give me the pressure! Zaya Cook crushed it! That's how you dial it up. Right there, you need a big bucket to end the half. You go to number one, Zaya Cook. Patient, calm, cool, collected. As the shot clock's running down, she lines it up, knocks it down. Number one, Zaya Cook for the South Carolina Gamecocks. That ties this thing up exactly how you want it in a tournament championship game. Knotted at 35 as we head to the locker room in Greenville. Let's take it back to the studio with Ashley. Twenty minutes of basketball stand between us and crowning the SEC tournament champion, and this is exactly the score you want—a tie ball game here in Greenville, South Carolina. The Gamecocks looking to repeat, but Georgia has made it tough on them. Courtney Lyle, alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck, Steffi Sorensen, also with us. Aaliyah Boston already has 14 points for Carolina, but they're going to need her to continue to produce in the second half. Well, she could have a lot more. South Carolina needs to understand when Aaliyah Boston gets the basketball, space out, give her room, don't run to her, run away from her. Victoria Saxon, if she were to clear out, there would only be one defender there that would have to make some decisions. But Saxon takes a step to Boston. She crowds her. She takes away part of her offensive threat. You've got to big, give the big girl room. But, Steffi, what's Georgia got going on? Well, the seniors continue to lead the way. Jenna Stady early on. They went inside to her, but also Gabby Connolly got off to a good start earlier in that first quarter. Maya Caldwell keeping the hot shooting alive. And, again, Q Morrison getting it done. Jenna Stady played just eight minutes. Good to see her back on the floor to start this third quarter for Joni Taylor. Yeah, we have elite bigs in this game. Both of them are right there, Aaliyah Boston and Jenna Stady. The seniors have been leading Georgia all season. Seven points, seven points, seven and four. No, they, they need them. They do, they, and they've got to stay on the floor out of foul trouble. But Georgia, looking back at that first half, they led for 14 minutes and 50 seconds of the first 20 minutes. Who will be in control these last 20 minutes? Georgia looking for its first SEC tournament title since 2001. It would be a repeat for South Carolina. Gamecocks have won five of the last six tournament titles. 
Georgia's giving them a run for their money today. Offensive foul on Victoria Saxton. That's, That's the first on Saxton. That's frustrating as a coach because you can guarantee that Don Staley drew up what exactly she wanted to run coming out of the locker room. And right away, a turnover. Jordan Isaacs. Georgia has been very efficient offensively. They're shooting 50% right now. We've got Q Morrison on Zaya Cook with the spacing for South Carolina. A lot of dribbling, need to space out, going away from Aaliyah Boston. I don't understand that. Establish her first. Because what is Georgia doing? They're establishing the bigs inside. It wasn't Jenna Stady, it was Jordan Isaacs, but Isaacs able to finish over Victoria Saxton. Isaac has six points. She only averages four points a game. Well, she heard us talking about the senior. She said, hey, don't forget about me. I'm a sophomore. I'm contributing as well. Yeah, she has earned a start every game this year. Maya Caldwell for the Lady Bulldogs. See now, South Carolina be patient, go right there. Now everybody else, Victoria Saxon needs to vacate that opposite post, that opposite block to get Boston room to move. Inside to Stady, as Steffi told you, Jenna Stady only played eight minutes in the first half. Look, I'd make this a battle of the bigs right now. Go to the strong move. Aaliyah Boston for South Carolina and Jenna Stady for Georgia. See who can flex their will. Who can dominate inside? Who can get who in foul trouble? Henderson shakes off Connolly. Watch the Georgia players. When they get the ball, the first peak they take is to find Jenna Stady. You want her down low. You want her on your team. Where did she come from? Coming in transition. She just stayed after it, eyed it, snatched it, and put it up. Remember last year, South Carolina had Kiki Herbert Harrigan. Well, that was mad Kiki. Now, a little bit of that coming out in Boston. She's able to flex right now. Look at the posts that we have in this game. Aaliyah Boston and Jenna Stady, the most in the SEC with 10 points, 10 rebounds, and over five blocks. Didn't get to see them battle very much in that first half because Jenna Stady was in foul trouble. Well, and now I think both teams are focused and concentrated on getting the ball to their post players. Now, these are two post players that don't have to play on the block but they need to get touches, whether it's facing up or down low. Now Georgia can go to Stady and attack. She's already proven that she can get around. She can be productive against Aaliyah Boston. Hugh Morrison's shot is short. Georgia cooling off a little bit. They shot 52% from the field in the first half. And South Carolina playing with both posts up high, occupying the low block. Q Morrison, is anybody surprised she's right there to tie the ball up? She's always involved defensively. If the ball is loose, Q Morrison is going to be going after it. The SEC co-defensive player of the year.
free peel. Coombs to the corner, it's Connolly. Gets her own rebound. Coombs will restart. Watch out for Zaya Cook. Couple of free shots coming. The South Carolina running in transition today. I'm just not pleased with their spacing. Even as Zaya Cook's coming down the middle of the floor, there weren't players running to the corners to space out to be an option. Everybody's running to the rack. Well, this afternoon, it's the regular season finale for number 18, Texas Tech, and number three, Baylor. This one has big-time NCAA tournament implications. You can see it at 4 Eastern on ESPN and the app. Of course, Baylor already clinched that Big 12 regular season title. Largest lead for South Carolina. This game has been so close. Georgia has really tested the defending tournament champs. Well, remember what Georgia did to Texas A&M. I mean, they came in, they knocked off the number one seed. So they have strong belief. They've got confidence that they could possibly knock off South Carolina. They've got the experience. The bench, the four seniors that are able to come in and contribute. Georgia's putting everything together at the right time. A scrappy team. Their defense is fun to watch. A defensive-minded group, but they can also shoot the basketball. Yeah, if they get hot the way that they were against Texas A&M, especially in the second half, watch out. Stady swats it from behind. <laughs> Offensive foul on Lily Grissett. Well, Georgia also boasting the SEC Coach of the Year. Got a little recognition for one of her, from one of her colleagues in Athens. Well, Joni Taylor says that she was shocked and humbled to be named SEC Coach of the Year. And her husband, Darius, surprised her. So she's downstairs in her basement working. She's on a Zoom call. And her husband, Darius, says, you got to come up and take a look at Drew. Drew's one of her daughter's legs. Something's wrong with it. So she comes running up the stairs. As you can imagine, a parent, frantic, and there was surprise with flowers and balloons. Special moment for her family. I can believe that Joni was appreciative of the surprise, but I'm sure she got a little chewing on Darius about <laughs> yeah. using one of her kids for the emergency to get her to come upstairs. Well, how else was he going to get her to come up? She was focused and dialed in on the Zoom, how to use the kid, get upstairs. Oh, I, man. All good times, though. But look, guys, who's in the stands today. You saw Kirby Smart um, congratulate Joni in one of his press conferences this week. He is in the stands watching the Lady Bulldogs seek that first SEC tournament title since 2001. Important to note, his wife, Mary Beth, was on that 2001 team that won the SEC tournament title. So she, he's got an extra. Not only is it a fellow Georgia colleague, but also he's married to an alum as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So a vested interest the Smart family has in watching Georgia today. And they've played really well so far. A bit of a scoring drought. They did shoot 51% from the field in the first half. That has cooled off just 16% here in the third quarter. Keeping an eye on Jenna Stady and Aaliyah Boston. It was a little chippy early in the first half. Up ahead to Q Morrison. Layup. That's 13 turnovers for South Carolina. Make it 14. 
Javin Nicholson this time. Georgia getting contributions from all different people. I'll tell you, when Georgia gets their, their defense goes up to another level, then their offense really starts clicking. South Carolina looks different than they have the last two days. They're not deliberate. A lot of question marks. Henderson with the shot clock winding down. Don Staley talked to this team for the last several weeks about being deliberate, not letting the defense change your shot, change what you want to do. Be deliberate in everything you do, whether it's driving to the basket, pulling up and taking a shot, or passing down low. Well, the other thing is the mentality of the trust of not one player has to do it by themselves. Right now, Aaliyah Ball is an only player in double figures, but she's having to get a lot of that from offensive putbacks, not the offense running through her. Stady got a block and got the ball back for Georgia inside to Nicholson. Can't pause with Boston right there. Blocking foul on Morrison. But again, there, Rebuild got lucky. Destiny Henderson wanted to give the ball up, but they're so close there. In reading the defense, maybe space out. If Bill runs wide, then Henderson has an option of either going to the basket or kick to the shooter. When you go straight in with Bill, you're putting her in a tough situation because there were two defenders back. throws it away. 11th turnover by Georgia. Bree Beal. Much better decision. Destiny Henderson made two defenders collect to her. That gave room for Bree Beal. Good sign if you're South Carolina. They seem to be settling back into the offense that has been so good over the last two days. Stady for three. Destiny Henderson pushing in transition, really attracted three defenders, and then drops a dime for Bree Bill for the easy two. Georgia calls timeout. South Carolina leads it by five. Aaliyah Boston being dominant right now for the South Carolina Gamecocks. She's getting on the offensive glass. She's driving it from the high post. Give her the ball on the block. The big girl is hard to stop. And if the defense leaves her, she makes herself available. As long as she stays on the glass, she can be productive for South Carolina. But they need to just feed the beast. They've got to give her the basketball more. Now you see the battle of the bigs in this game. Aaliyah Boston has 19 points. Jenna Stady only six points for Georgia. Remember, she only played eight minutes in that first quarter, Steph, in that first half, Steffi. Yeah, Aaliyah Boston dominating. And, Peck, I know something that you talked about at the half was the spacing for South Carolina. Have they done a better job with that? Still, It's still not great. Spacing as a whole, not just with Aaliyah Boston, but we talked about it, too, in transition. They've got to read and recognize what's the strengths of who they're playing with like they did yesterday against Tennessee. Destiny Henderson finds some room for the layup. Georgia needs some points. South Carolina has scored seven straight. Georgia only has eight points in the quarter. Well, one of the things that Georgia can do is using ball screens attack Aaliyah Boston. It's 
Some traffic down low. Henderson will swing it around. Well, the screening action was to bring Boston to the ball. But by the time she got there, it already reversed back. But Bree Bill makes some pay. Largest lead for Carolina. Nine straight points. Q Morrison with the clock, clock winding down. Jordan Isaacs ran out of time. Georgia struggling after such a good first half. The momentum has shifted to South Carolina. Nine straight points for the Gamecocks. They're on top. has been South Carolina's tournament in recent years. They have been the one or the two seed in the last seven SEC tournaments. Only lost one game in the last six years in the conference tournament. That's a, so impressive. Even more impressive? Yeah, they've won five of the last six tournament titles. They are on track to win their sixth SEC tournament title, but they got to hit the gas right here. Well, right now, with having a nine-point lead, Don Staley has talked about this team being too nice. They need some nasty, so when they get a lead, can they extend that lead and just put a team away? That's going to be a tough, tall task going against a hungry Georgia Bulldog basketball team. South Carolina has scored nine straight. Georgia struggling to score in the third quarter after shooting 52% in the first half. Morrison blocked by Bree Beal. Caldwell running the other way. And she gets blocked. We have seen South Carolina's length really help them, specifically in the third quarter. Shot blocking is something that South Carolina is one of the best in the country at doing because they have length. And it's not just Aaliyah Boston and Victoria Saxon inside. The guards had that length as well. South Carolina is first in the nation in blocks per game. Travel. Twelfth turnover for Georgia. Now, there's a matter of time, but Georgia also, because of their defense, extended. They could try to turn South Carolina over, bring the press. It's worked earlier. They've already turned South Carolina over 15 times. Oh, Q Morrison almost had it. You see, Q Morrison has defended several different people on the floor. Whoever seems to be hurting Georgia offensively, that's where Q Morrison ends up being on defense. Off the fingertips of Michaela Coombs. What's changed for, oh, there's Zaya Cook. We were wondering, trying to get an update on her. We saw her go back to the locker room. We'll keep an eye on her. You see there when Aaliyah Boston took off to drive. Victoria Saxon, and I know she's going in to rebound wise, but she's got to read where her defense is because her defense is going to help with Aaliyah Boston. She's got to make herself available, make herself an option. Lily Grissett limping over to the South Carolina sideline. She looks like she's cramping up to her. Oh, she's going right for her shoe. Zaya Cook trying to work to get back in for Carolina. Meanwhile, Georgia's offense got to get something going. Well, it's been Maya Caldwell in the first two days of this tournament. She's got to look, get him to be an option. Oh, and that's a foul on Aaliyah Boston. That's the third on Boston. Yeah, Jenna Stady in showing that she's got any fear. She's got the capability of going against Boston. She just needs more opportunities, more touches, so that she can make plays like that. First field goal for Georgia since the 344 mark in the third quarter. They get a three-point play out of it from Jenna Stady. She's got nine. Two-possession game. 
Georgia gets a stop right now, especially if they could run in transition. Zaya Cook's going to check in for South Carolina. Henderson elevates. 14 points for Henny. She loves the SEC tournament. This is the second year in a row she's had major production. She was a member of the SEC All-Tournament team last year when South Carolina won their fifth title. Bucket starting to fall, though. Yeah, Q Morrison ain't going to go away. Do you remember her in the second half of that Tennessee game? She just put the team on her back. 17 points in the second half against Tennessee, and Georgia defeated Tennessee not once but twice this season. Now there you see Victoria Saxton spaced out. That's how you got to play when the ball goes inside to Aaliyah Boston. Over 20 points for Aaliyah Boston. Eight rebounds, three blocks. Morrison on Henderson. Coombs steps into it. See now, South Carolina doesn't need to be in a hurry. They can use the clock and then put Boston back down on the block. Space out and let your All-American go to work. Turnover. Last possession that the ball went inside. You see where Victoria Saxon does, spaces out. This makes this defender have to make a decision. Do I stay or do I go? But it gives Aaliyah Boston room to work. Just space out. She can take care of business by herself. It's on Bree Beal. Ooh. That's on Bree Beal. I thought they were going to get Aaliyah Boston because she was shoving Jenna Stady down low. Boston already has three fouls. Exactly. Jenna Stady's got two. Important to note. Keeping an eye on those bigs. See, as long as Destiny Henderson is going to go under the screen of Q Morrison, need to move that screen down, get her closer. She can come just right off that screen or behind the screen and get the jumper. Georgia turns it over. Stady was looking for Jordan Isaacs. Timeout, South Carolina. Under six minutes until we crown the SEC tournament champion. Well, South Carolina has turned things around. It was a very close first half. South Carolina in this half shooting 56% for the field. This team is mentally tough. Part of the reason for that is the meetings that they've had with Felicia and Johnny Allen. They do team building with this group. It's nothing new. They've met with this couple for a while now, but they did have another meeting with them after that loss to Texas A&M a week ago. It's something that Dawn does in the preseason. She has another meeting mid-season and then after the regular season before you come into the SEC tournament. But the unique thing about Felicia and Johnny Hall, Felicia Hall Allen is also Joni Taylor's agent. So she and her husband are both here today, and they're sitting on their hands. They're not cheering for either team. Yeah, Felicia represents over 20 college coaches on the women's side, and they, their effort is to get players to take ownership of their success. And Johnny actually has a nice ring that he got from Don Silly for that 2017 national title. And they're, they're, they're 
ability to get the most out of players and coaches really what sets them apart as a couple and why they work with so many teams across the board. Well, just talking to Coach Staley, Steffi, after last season, I mean, they were the ones that pushed this team to maybe have some uncomfortable conversations that got them to a better start, st excuse me, a better place chemistry-wise that allowed them to have an opportunity to make a run for a national title. That's where they noticed and really paid attention to whenever Ty Harris spoke, the rest of the team leaned in. And that's when Felicia Hall Allen said, your team is right where they need to be because they are ready to be led. And Ty Harris last season was a great leader for that team. One second on the shot clock. And it's a shot clock violation on South Carolina. The Gamecocks have definitely been tested and are still being tested today. Georgia, who shot 52% in the first half, struggling to score in the second half, only put up eight points in the third quarter. And Georgia's got to try to get some buckets from Jenna Stady. They've got to attack Aaliyah Boston. And that's going to be a foul on Connolly. Now, for the last five minutes, will South Carolina play through Aaliyah Boston? Javin Nicholson has pushed her out. Well, Jenna Stady now is guarding Victoria Saxon, so she's in more of a position to help instead of the initial defender on Boston. And that help gets Georgia the basketball. Wow, six turnovers, six made field goals for Georgia in the second half. See again, Desi Henderson getting away with going under the screen of Q Mor for Q Morrison. Morrison driving. It's just a two possession game. All Georgia needs to do right now is get a stop. Jenna Stady back on Aaliyah Boston. And gets Stady to foul. The third foul on Jenna Stady. The quickness, though, on the other end offensively. Q Morrison able to get by Destiny Henderson, and there is no rotation. Victoria Saxon, Aaliyah Boston not leaving their player, and Morrison taking full advantage. Georgia's brought in Michaela Coombs. Aaliyah Boston at the free throw line. Carolina has been a great free throw shooting team at the SEC tournament, hitting 83%. And that has been something that has been up and down throughout the regular season for South Carolina. Came in shooting just 60, was it 66% from the free throw line. Morrison working on Beal. Javin Nicholson, right place, right time. Fourth on Boston. Felicia Grinner calls. That is, that's just a normal post-up play. That is too ticky-tack to be calling right now with three minutes left to go in this ball game. If you're Georgia, why not drive at Boston or give the ball to Stady? She's got four fouls. I would put Stady in a ball screen and a drive and attack at Boston.
See, that's where players have to recognize. You know that Aaliyah Boston's got four fouls. Like, I would call Stady up, say, come set a screen for me. And I would go straight at Aaliyah Boston. Now it's the Gamecocks in the scoring drought. Ooh, lucky second chance. But the shot clock didn't reset. This is an opportunity for Georgia. Yeah, they got to give the ball to Jenna Stady. Yes. Did they call it kickball? They did. Morris in her own rebound. She didn't even hit the deck. Just went right back up in the air and put it in. Back in 30 seconds to a tight SEC tournament championship game. Just four points separate these two teams, Don Staley and Joni Taylor, making history the first time in an SEC tournament championship game. We have had two black female head coaches going against each other. Georgia looking for that first SEC tournament title since 2001. South Carolina looking for their sixth title. Gamecocks in a scoring drought, only six points in the fourth quarter. Well, now South Carolina has got to be patient, but they've got to get a good shot. They can't come up empty, and they don't because Destiny Henderson knocks it down. Henderson loves the SEC tournament. It's Q Morrison right now. And I have seen that the ball screen, move it down. And as long as South Carolina wants to go behind the screen, Q Morrison's got that jumper all day long. Morrison dives on the ball. Holding that left leg, but her teammates help her up. Possession arrows pointing to Carolina. I couldn't really see what happened, but I can guarantee you Q Morrison isn't coming out of this ball game. Yeah, 10 of her 17 points have come here in the second half. In South Carolina, they're just going to try to use the shot clock. Let it run down, and then you're either going to have to have an option driving to the basket, or you got to give the ball to Aaliyah Boston. Cook looking for Saxton, threw it away. And Nicholson traveled. Wow. That's a big break for South Carolina because Georgia was out in the lanes ready to run. Georgia's defense has held South Carolina to just eight points in the fourth quarter. And Connolly's going to foul. Georgia has one more foul to give. And Georgia can't afford for a lot of time to come off the clock. They need to try to get a five second call or foul right away. The foul's on Coombs. So next foul by Georgia, South Carolina will be shooting. They need to foul Bree Bill. She is the weakest free throw shooter. Wilson Henderson to the free throw line. That's the fifth team foul for Georgia. Well, as soon as the 64 team field is announced next Monday at 8 Eastern, sign up to play the Women's Tournament Challenge on ESPN.com. Fill out your bracket for a chance to win $10,000 in Amazon gift cards. Go to ESPN.com slash TC Women.
They're going to look to see if anything extra happened on this foul. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, you just know in this situation you got to foul. If you do it too soft or you miss and the officials don't call it, time's running off the clock. So you've got to make sure that I don't think that there was anything intentional or malicious. Oh, I do want to correct something. That previous foul was on Jenna Stady, not on Coombs. So Jenna Stady has four fouls. Gabby Connolly also has four fouls for Georgia. This doesn't look like good news. Yeah, Henderson's at the free throw line. So it was an intentional foul. They upgrade this. Well, you've got to me. You've got to give the appearance of making an attempt for the ball. South Carolina is also going to get possession because of that. But Coombs comes up with the steal. They're going to go to the monitor to double check who touched it last. Yeah, in order for the shot not to go up, I got to believe that Bree Bill deflected or got a block there. They see. Oh, Bree Bill didn't touch it. Yeah, that should be South Carolina ball. Yes. Yeah, that's that's a good no call. But now, with it being South Carolina's ball. Georgia's got to got to bring full court pressure unless Don Saley calls timeout to advance the basketball. But regardless, when the ball comes in, Georgia's got to foul right away and send South Carolina back to the free throw line. Yeah, that's a great look right there. Super clear that South Carolina did not touch it. It should be their basketball. You know, that's textbook defense by Bree Bill. Coaches preach every day in practice, hands straight up. Don't rock, block the, break the plane. And Bree Bill didn't. She did go straight up. Gary Blair calls that bank robber defense. Yeah, put your hands up. Put your hands up. 43.5 <laughs> seconds away from their sixth SEC tournament title. And you see South Carolina, Dawn Staley, she's got three timeouts. So in this timeout now, she's talking about how get the ball in, know that they're going to foul, and even talking about the next play after that. So that if Joni Taylor doesn't call timeout, she knows what to expect defensively. And she wants to make sure you don't foul a three-point shooter. If anything, give up a two. But don't foul Georgia in the act of shooting from the three-point line. Yeah, so Dawn Staley, you see her there. She wants to call timeout. That will allow her to advance the basketball. I love it that when the women, when they added this element to the game, the men have got to look at possibly adopting it, but it's, it's a great part of the game to form your strategy, to uh, advance the ball and then to execute for your team to whether you need a shot or just to get the ball inbounds. Both teams with two timeouts. As soon as Georgia fouls, South Carolina will be shooting. And so now, Joni Taylor also has to talk to her team about make or miss. When you rebound it, if it's a miss, don't, it, don't advance a pass, because if you do that, you can't advance the basketball. Once you get possession, timeout, so that we can advance the ball, take it out in front of our own bench. Georgia's trying to get its first SEC tournament title since 2001. South Carolina's known that feeling a little bit more recent. 
Georgia really working on trying to get a five second call, but you've got a big target in going to Aaliyah Boston. Yeah, and Boston is a 72% free throw shooter on the season. Today she's eight for eight. Gabby Connolly fouls out for Georgia. So now Georgia with two timeouts again. On a miss, rebound it, immediately call timeout. On a make, same thing. Don't inbound the ball. Call the timeout so that your team can advance it, take it out in front of your bench. Oh, come out, come out, come out. Don't and Joni Taylor immediately calls timeout. Jenna Stady still down, still down on the floor for Georgia. Georgia had already called that timeout. Sadie walking off on her own. Nine points, five rebounds, three blocks. She was gotten foul trouble early in this game, only played eight minutes in the first half. But the biggest difference in this ball game has been to go along with having Aaliyah Boston. It's been Destiny Henderson. It's like SEC tournament time is Destiny Henderson time. And she has pushed in transition. She has come into this ball game dialed in, come into this tournament dialed in, and really done a nice job of opening things up for South Carolina. If too much attention was paid to Aaliyah Boston, Destiny Henderson found seams, found opportunities to score the ball. Last two games, she averaged 15 points per game. Better than that today, 18 points for Destiny Henderson to help South Carolina in this battle with Georgia. They get the ball into Sarah Ashley Barker. And Stady is fouled. That's the fourth on Saxton. And see, this is what South Carolina doesn't want to happen. Georgia is scoring, had the opportunity to score the basketball with no time. And Stady's at the line, a 78% free throw shooter. And South Carolina has the two timeouts. Again, now South Carolina's got to be thinking, if I rebound it, timeout, or on a make, take it out of bounds, timeout, and advance the basketball. Stady gets one of two. Dawn Staley calls timeout. They do advance. Both teams now with one timeout, no fouls to give. 35.7 seconds left. There's about a 5.7 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. And what Georgia needs to do, they tried to, they need to try to make Bree Bill catch the basketball because she's the weakest free throw shooter on the court right now. Don't allow the ball to come in to Aaliyah Boston, even though she just missed two before. But really force the ball, force the issue. And then if you don't get the basketball, you've got to foul. Destiny Henderson will be the inbounder. Brie Beal is over in the corner. You could also make Victoria Saxton. Try to make her shoot the free throw as well. The officials are at the monitor. I'm not sure what they're looking at. Oh, they're just over at the scorer's table. Whoa. 
Joni Taylor just heard something she didn't like. Not sure if there was a substitution problem. I don't know what's going on. They'll give the ball to South Carolina to inbound it, though. Boston tacks on two more. Championship in the sights of South Carolina. Michaela Coombs. South Carolina timeout. Throwing the ball from the sideline and getting it all the way in after the screen. That was a great screen by Bree Bill to free up Aaliyah Boston. Twenty-five points for Aaliyah Boston tonight. Nine rebounds. And she finished the regular season. She had three games in a row in single digits. Not the case. Once the tournament hit and her team started playing through her, the production went up. And that's how, in order for South Carolina, like after the SEC tournament, you get into the NCAA tournament, it's either you win or you go home. They have got to play through Aaliyah Boston. South Carolina came in with that mentality. A week ago today, they lost the SEC regular season title when they lost to Texas A&M. You see Lily Grissett on the sidelines for South Carolina. We saw her leave the game and now back out with a boot on that right foot. The only senior on this team. They've had to rely on a lot of youth. South Carolina just 23.4 seconds away from its sixth SEC tournament title. They advance the ball and will inbound again. Shot clock is off. It'll be Victoria Saxton shooting. That's a good decision. Victoria Saxton, 59% free throw shooter. Georgia only has one time out left. I think again, Joni has the option. She can advance the basketball. You know, unless her team has worked on the situation of you get it and go and understand. Use a drag screen, penetrate, pitch, find a three-point shooter. Georgia uses its final timeout, 22.3 seconds left. You see assistant coach Karen Lang for Joni Taylor. She is in charge of the special situation. So Joni Taylor can coach and watch the game. And as the situation, when there is a timeout called, Karen Lang already knows what to draw on the board so that her team knows, look, this is who I'm listening to, one voice. I know what's coming, and I know what the expectation is in execution. What are they looking for out of this timeout? Well, I, you, I think that you have got to either look for a quick three Maya Caldwell, Q Morrison, or if not, going to a quick two and go at Jenna Staley, Jenna Staley going to Aaliyah Boston, because you can get a three-point play that way as well. As far as South Carolina goes, look, switch all the ball screens. You've got to switch everything, and if anything, you give up a two, but you don't give up a three and don't foul a three-point shooter. South Carolina trying to assert its dominance, dominance in this SEC tournament. They have won five of the last six, a 17-1 record over the last seven years in this conference tournament. It is amazing to look at what Dawn Staley has done from the day that she stepped on campus and built her team to be so dominant in the SEC. Here's Georgia's chance. Q Morrison, the deep three. She got it. No timeouts for either teams. And Georgia's got a foul. 
That's Stady's fifth. I want to tell you, this game isn't over. We have seen how quickly Q Morrison can manufacture points. Jane Genestady's day is done with 10 points. Destiny Henderson not thinking that Q was going to be the one to pull up the, for the three. And Morrison knocked it down. We talked about how much respect Morrison has for Joni Taylor and would do anything for her. I can tell you, Q Morrison said, Coach, I got you. Give me the ball. And she knocked down the three. 13 of her 20 points have come in the second half. So now Leah Boston will shoot two if she misses again. Hey, get the ball to Q Morrison. I like the decision making that number 23 for Georgia is making. <laughs> Defensively for South Carolina, who, with whoever the ball handler is for Georgia, the defender has got to make the offense change directions. You cannot allow them to come down the floor full head of steam. Back to a five-point lead for Carolina. Michaela Coombs. Morrison again all over the boards. That's it. Pure dominance. South Carolina owns the SEC tournament. For the sixth time, they are the champions. A historic day in the SEC, the first time we see two black female head coaches go head-to-head -head in this tournament championship game. It is Dawn Staley coming out victorious. It was a great competitive game. It's been a great tournament all the way through the finals. But South Carolina had something to prove. They were denied the regular season championship. Texas A&M took that. This is good momentum for South Carolina going from here on to the NCAAs. Aaliyah Boston leading the way. No one surprised. 27 points, 10 rebounds for Aaliyah Boston to help South Carolina pick up their sixth SEC tournament title in the last seven years. What a luxury it is for South Carolina to have. Look, the rest of the team, you can try scoring from the perimeter. You can try running a lot of different offenses, but you always have this little joker in your pocket. You can go down low to Aaliyah Boston. They will need her in the next phase of this season, the NCAA tournament. South Carolina expected to be a one seed. We will find out a week from tomorrow. Georgia, a very talented team. They will be a top four seed in the NCAA tournament. I don't think anybody wants to face them. Well, and I, I with the only being a five point difference, the committee might even still look at, can Georgia move up from a three to a two? What a transformation for South Carolina. Destiny Henderson has gone into this role at point guard. Yeah, South Carolina continuing to dance. Look, and Destiny Henderson, she had a good time last year. Even played well enough to possibly have been the MVP. She really had things going for South Carolina all three games in this tournament. Carolyn, we saw South Carolina a week ago today lose to Texas A&M. The biggest change you've seen in these last three games for the Gamecocks? They've come back together as a team, number one. Number two, they're playing with and through Aaliyah Boston. But they still always bring that dominant defense, shot blocking, shutting it down, nothing coming in the lane. Lily Grissett, the only senior for South Carolina. Her last SEC tournament, remember she could come back, but to go out with back-to-back -back wins, not a bad thing. You know, and Don Staley talks about just the leadership that Lily Grissett has brought, the commitment, the role she has accepted of coming off the bench for this South Carolina team. These players sacrifice, do whatever necessary. When it comes from your senior, it sets the tone for everybody else. South Carolina, is finding its flow. The sixth time SEC tournament champions, Don Staley is with Steffi. You know, Don, this, your program in the SEC championship, you guys have never lost a game. What does that say about your program and, and y'all's dominance? 
I mean, I mean, it says that it says that um, the leadership that we have. Uh, we've had great leaders, great le senior leadership that uh, won't allow us to lose in these situations. So um, I, I thank them, our former players, for leaving a legacy of leadership. Maybe some questions about this team coming into the SEC tournament. What answers did you get? I mean, we're a gritty team, you know. Um, you're fortunate if you don't go through some things during the season. Um, uh, unfortunately for us, it happened during the end of the season, but we got a team that's resilient. They regroup. They have an understanding. They have a want to, to win, so they're going to listen. And we gain a lot by losing. We don't like to lose, but, but you gain. And, and we gained an SEC uh, tournament championship. I know that moment was special when you walked on the floor and you saw Joni Taylor to, the first time in history of this, of this SEC championship. What did it mean to you? I mean, my heart's full. It, it's full. It's full because, you know, when you, when you and, and people say it, you're making it a race thing, it's not a race thing. It's an opportunity thing, an opportunity for black women uh, to be able to experience this. Um, it means something. It looks you know, it, it, it looks a little different than in my coaching career to have someone um, black that you're you're fighting for in, in a tournament, any championship. So, you know, this is pretty cool. Um, happy birthday to Joni. Joni and her program are going to go far in the NCAA tournament, and I hope every you know every school in our in our uh, conference goes far because you know of what what it takes to to get here. We got the best conference in the country, bar none, um, because we beat each other up every day. Look at that, that's a, yeah. you know, Lily, our senior's gonna limp out of here. Um, she gave it everything that she had. I don't know what her injury is, um, but she gave it to us every ounce that she was on the floor and, you know, on the practice floor. So, you know, hopefully we can get her back, get her healthy, and, and, and make a run in the NCAA tournament. Don, congratulations, incredible showing from your team. Thanks for your time. Thank you. History made in multiple ways today in Greenville, South Carolina. But at the end of the day, it is South Carolina. The Gamecocks, for the sixth time in the last seven years, they are your SEC tournament champions. South Carolina expected to be a top seed in the NCAA tournament. Their season doesn't end in Greenville, but this one goes on the highlight reel. A tough battle, and it's the Gamecocks surviving Georgia. They take down the Lady Bulldogs 67-62. A sixth title for South Carolina, and boy, is it sweet.